angular uh, performance and security okay we'll go to the session will be three hours and first one of our we're going to divide two part one is the performance it will be one and a half hours second security it will be the one hours and last 30 minutes will go for discussion and any doubts or anything will be there you have you can go to discuss okay now let's go and discuss about what is a angular then we'll go and discuss about performance and security i know that all of you know about angular what angular doing and what is the use of angular but let's go and start with a little bit introduction about the angular then we'll go and discuss about other things as all of you know that angular is a like front end technology you can say that a ui technology which is used to develop the single page application means if nowadays you know that all the places people are using the single page applications right like only one page now you are going to develop the component based application and component based application you will go and develop the applications right just like a react just like um, view we are using the angular and all these front end technologies like react view angular all are using the concept called component based development and you know that component is a uh, ui block which is used to develop the ui and you can reuse that ui in all the places yeah now now but i know that you all of know maybe developing the angular software your company or you are learning the angular that is okay but as a developer coding is different part you develop a good component and you write some code connect to the backend api and getting some data binding the data all these things you are doing but you have to understand that as a developer if you're going for one by one step ahead the application performance and security is the most key component for the application suppose you develop one you develop one application right and when you develop one application and you think that suppose this application taking so much time to like load the application okay so much time to fetch the data and suppose you are navigating from one page to another page is taking too much time now as a developer okay you will say that okay my api getting the uh, response is very bad and uh, all this thing will be come but as a developer from the ui developer perspective you must have to know that like whatever you are developing how optimizely you are writing your code that is the things now in this case optimization is not about code guys like okay you can define a variable you can add to number or you doing all these things this is the code but how in the angular wise you can go and optimize your code in such a way optimize your function in such a way that is going to like achieve in the in, that is going to enhance your performance of your application same to same we're going to learn a lot of tools today how you can going to implement the tools to implement the angular performance that is the one part and you know that security without security there is no existence of any applications right for that reason we have to learn that how we can go and do best practice for angular security in the application i know that no one of you are using any security mechanism just you are using the just simply using the angular functionality but you can imagine security is a lot of thing available in angular how to perform the different different tasks using the security okay in this case guys what we will do now we'll go and discuss about first how go implement the angular performance then we'll go and discuss about angular security okay before going to start all this thing let me create a fresh application for you a angular application and that application i am going to write all the angular code in this uh, like demo i am going to use the angular 13 version i am not using angular 14 because we want to do a another uh, workshop for angular 14 where you can go and learn about features of angular 14 but whatever going to do today is angular 13 there is no difference much more difference between angular 13 and 14 new features is added but you all have to know that angular 8 angular 10 angular 11 angular all this 13 has the same functionality new new things added but if you see the core functionality all are using the same kind of concept 
Now let's go and discuss about like how we can go and what are the tools are going to use like um, implement the, uh, like this angular performance and security okay before going all this discussion we'll go and create one space app for angular okay let me do one thing okay now in this folder we are going to create the angular application let me open the same command prompt before going that let me check the what is the current angular version we are using let me for that ng you know that version tag is used to check that what is the current version of our application right we are using 13.3.9 which is the stable version for the angular right now here we are going to create our application to create application we are going to create the ng new and the project name now here the project name going to give that suppose um, performance and security okay performance and security and in this case this code i am going to like uh, push into the git and going to this co course only i'm like this session only i'm going to give you the uh, this link of this one then you can go and simply uh, access the application okay let me create the application and you know that when going to create an application it will going to ask few more questions like you want to add a routing or not and which css you are going to use all these things are going to ask let them create the application meanwhile application creating will go and discuss what are the different different tools we are going to use for these things okay for the application performance okay we'll go and discuss about the first point application performance what we are going to do that first thing we are going to do that that is called the http caching let understand http caching now implement that suppose you are uh, suppose calling uh, the same api multiple times using how we are going to enhance the performance of the application using the http caching second one we are going to learn about a tool called google lighthouse we are going to implement our Google Lighthouse tool is going to help us to optimize our application performance. The third thing we are going to learn about the lazy loading. Okay, and I know that lazy loading, all of you know that, but I'm not going to discuss much more on that. But I'm going to give you the idea how the lazy loading is going to implement your application performance. Here, maybe lazy loading is uh, is old for you, but this Google Lighthouse and HTTP caching is going to be our main. Uh, topic for today okay same to same we'll go for security second one the security in the security we are going to learn about lot of things first we are going to learn about what is called sanitize okay how you can go and sanitize your application okay this is the one of the most interesting topic for the application okay and dom manipulation dom okay dom security okay and third one we are going to learn about the router security and you i, I hope that you all are you maybe know router security like the different different router guard you can call that but we'll go and implement all these things now our today's target is we are going to implement the performance using these three things and the security using these three things this is our this is our motto for this today's class okay now let's go and implement the one by one things into our application how to implement the performance using the using the http caching and what is the use of google lighthouse tool so what is the use of the lazy loading same to same in security sanitize what is the sanitize and dumps what is the drum security and the router security we'll go and discuss one by one in depth okay now uh, our agenda is ready for now now let's go and start implement one by one thing now okay now you can see that guys our application got created successfully and let me navigate to our performance tool and you know that this is our application let me open the application in code okay now you can see that our fresh application got created okay what we are going to do now we are going to implement first our performance stuff 
like how we are going to implement the http task okay now before going that uh, let me let me create few components for you and because everything going to create from the scratch due to that it will take a little bit time to do the all this thing we are not focusing much more on the like um, the designing stuff this is purely coding part designing stuff we are not going to do in this session this is all about the coding stuff now let me give a scenario okay what we're going to do let me draw something and understand the http things here okay now in, and you know that few of the like uh, you all of your like if you're working in a project or you're working in a company you know that always there is a requirement when, which requirement you have a two drop down will be there just imagine simple example you have two drop down will be there okay just like a country and state okay just like a country and you have another uh, drop down is called state okay and you know that uh, country and state just like suppose if you're going to select a country and based on that it's going to load the state okay simple one means if you click the country list of country you are going to see and once you select the country we are going to load the list of states and maybe not country will be state some of your application suppose you are going to load one features based on that you're going to load another features then sometime this kind of features will be there this is called cascading cascading drop down cascading means based one one drop down value another drop down is going to load the data okay just imagine i'm for the example what i'm doing i have two country will be there one is india another is us okay and just imagine i have selected the country here now once you select the country here you know that we are going to call one api the india api the state api we are going to pass the parameter called india now once you pass the parameter called india now list of response will come from this api now it's going to give the data means the process will be suppose you are going to select one country then a second guys let me do it okay let me do here you have two country called india and usa now selection of one of the country what we're doing we are calling one api right we are calling one api and that api is going to give us the list of states now once the states is there then what we are doing we are simply binding the api to the states this is the way you are doing suppose you are uh, calling one uh, you have the list of uh, data once you select data you are loading the state now here the question is like okay first time you select the india now it's get the state second time you select us now you select the date now understand the next problem the problem is again i select the india now what we'll do guys you again call the api means just imagine an example in india i'm calling that api okay i'm calling the api and this api give the response second i call the us and calling the api and get the response third suppose you again select india then if you select india then what will happen guys again it will go to call the api and get the response right now in this case guys so many times if i go and select the india us india us the country now that many time you are going to call the states okay now in this case guys we have to understand that already in the first call first call means this is so just imagine this is number one number two number three in the first call you have called the api get the response okay second call you call the api get the response but third call you have to imagine that already this is happened here 
right this all already this call is already happened means already the we have the red data we have the response now why you need to call the same api again and again if the response is already with us just understand the problem here from past two is okay because we are calling first time but you imagine in second time what will happen now once you call the same api we are now need to call the api again and again because you know that once you call the api it will go to the server and server going to process the request again it's going to the database get the data will do lot of things right now what we're going to do it now now or without creating the without calling the same api again and again how we can go and use the existing response of our application means already this api got called we have to store this api response into our client side memory into our memory and reuse that response or from the memory when it required in this case what will happen no need to call the same api again and again to the data to the api because you know that once you call the api you are going to consume the client bandwidth also apart from that we have to wait for some time to get the response lot of delay will be there just imagine uh, there is an api who is getting some thousands of data or uh, like ten thousand data just imagine one api calling they are giving thousands of data and in this case are you going to call the thousands of data all the time no right why why no because because what will happen because if you're going to call you know all the process is going to be start instead of doing that but if the same button on the increase, server will increase yes yes okay now in this case you have two things you can do either you can implement the server side caching or you can do the client side caching right now if you're going to anytime going to send the request to server server resource is going to use nowadays all are using the cloud infrastructure now you know cloud infrastructure means each and every hit you are going to pay the money to the provider for that reason server side caching also another mechanism without going database we can use the cache data from there but the things now we are going to understand we are not going to focus on the server side just imagine how the server side using the caching mechanism same mechanism how you go and implement into your client side that is our motto to understand i know that few of you are already using the client side maybe java spring blue dot net core python all different different language you are using node.js also but we are not discussing guys all the backend stuff because backend is purely different from the front end stuff now we'll go and discuss how this caching mechanism we're going to implement into our application in such a way that the same api is going to hit instead of going to the actual api call they are going to call from our local cache now this is our local request will go and check that the request is cached or not if cached response from here if all if not cached it will go to the server and get the response and cache it that is our requirement we have to fulfill today now let's go i hope you able to understand the problem what is the problem here we are going to call the same api multiple times without calling the same api multiple times how we can go and call the data from the existing api whatever existing in the memory now let's go implement the same thing using the application things hey just understand suppose you are creating one application and that application lots of field will be there and based on the field response you are getting the lot of data that's not only this country state i'm giving an example of country state but just an example like user are playing around all this different 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 data just like suppose you are booking one flight and you know that suppose someone is going to click suppose uh, hyderabad to delhi or delhi to hyderabad and suppose you click one of the day one of the particular uh, uh, date now you're going to get the response from the client response from the api like this is the pricing but suppose again we are going to click that one now what are you going to do you are not going to call the api because already you have an existing data you're going to reuse that one like this is one scenario same to same we have thousands of scenario will come in the project where without calling the same api multiple times how we can go and implement the things into our application okay now let's go and implement the same thing using the angular let me start the application guys npm start you know that npm start is used to start the application and uh, let me create a new component called ng generate component suppose country uh, let me define this way ng generate component uh, suppose 
country casing slash country state okay we are going to create a component called uh, country state and that component is going to place inside the caching folder now once you click the, this one you will see that it's going to create a country it's going to create a component for us now see this one now into the src folder we are going to create a caching inside caching we have a component called this one okay now let me quickly do, do one thing let me quickly create a uh, um, call like our country state drop down here and we'll go and use all these things let me guys uh, after you opening this one let me go to our app component an app component i'm going to use app country state this is your component time right and if you're going to run the application you can see that we can able to see we can able to see our country state now let me design the things let me simple do the designing suppose i have a heading here that is called uh, casing okay now here i have two drop down uh, one is suppose we're going to label called country and there is a select box which is going to load the list of country same to same i have another one this is called state and i have a drop down here now if you're going to open you can see that i have a country and state here let me little bit uh, like zoom you can able to see this one okay now here we are going to bind list of country here like list of country here and list of state here for that reason what i'm going to do let me create a models here okay now models let me create is called i country state dot model dot ts guys always just understand who is going to create any models sorry let me create, sorry now models like you must have to create a model to bind the data don't use any any keyword anywhere it's if required you have to use otherwise don't use okay now let me do like export interface let me create an interface which interface is going to bind the uh, country and state data suppose let me create an interface called i country and state you know that our interface is used to define the our poco class like just like attributes of the class that is going to contain suppose this is content suppose id and call name okay means we have to define the uh, two one one is id and uh, name which is going to contain the id of the country uh, so id of the value and name of the I mean, id going to bind in the value attribute and name we're going to bind into the our this attribute now guys what also we required we required a data which data is going to bind in country and bind in state okay for that reason guys i have created one sample xml file and which xml file actually contain the list of the which contain the list of country and state now you can see that uh, in my desktop i have a folder called json let me open this json file okay i have uh, already created for the demo purpose i have created because we are not going to consume any api we have created a json file and json file why i'm saying that json file you also learn about mockup today what is the use of mockup in the angular application suppose just imagine we have three json files are available okay let me do one thing let me copy this file copy this um, folder and open our project in the assets assets one we are going to uh, paste this one okay inside assets we are going to paste this one the json one now if you open the json folder you can see that you know the assets folder is used to keep all the uh, static files and folders into the application now you can see that we have these three files are available one you can see that we have a country.json sorry the country.json is contain the array of data like this is the array which contain two attributes one is name another name is code code means the code of the country name is the name of the country same to same we have two another uh, json is called india and called us in india api you can see that we have all the states and all the territory available in india all are listed here 
which contain the code and name same to same if you go to us you can see the same thing all the states of united states is available here using the code and name you can see that all the json if you see that all the json contain the value called code a code and name now let's go and create the model whatever model we created the attribute called code and name but before that you have to imagine that just imagine this is our backend api means we are going to consume this json file into our applications we are not going to call any third party api because we don't have anything now we are going to use the just Im we have to imagine that these are the api you're going to call now let's see one thing due to this all the apis all the json file contain the attribute called name and code we are going to define the here name and code here now let me name also that's a code okay i country state contain both the name and code this is the model we are going to bind into our application right now let's go to the component let me define two um like variable here one is countries suppose the country options which is the i country states okay another one is um another one is is called the state options and state options means this, this is going to store the list of states and this is going to store the list of country now i country states options equal to r i have initial initialize the both the country and state options here right then what we're going to do we are going to call the api and that api is going to bind the data before going that what we are going to do now let's go bind this particular uh, variable this list of array variable into our ui and you know that bind that that one we have um, going to use the this one option right we are going to use option and option we are going to use the ng4 and you know ng4 you are going to use the suppose country options okay country options and options contain the value attribute and the value attribute is going to bind the item of code we are going to bind the code and the option value uh, data uh, like the label we are going to bind option uh, item dot name okay simple we are going to iterate that uh, country options and this country option going to bind both the uh, code and name same to same let me copy this one guys and paste it here uh, here instead of country options we are going to use the state options okay now if any value will come to the states we are going to bind it here it's pretty much simple one we are not making complex we are going to learn the concept here what happening here a country option does not exist why because this file is not saved i can see that okay we have two things data bind got successfully the only thing we are going to implement that is called the bind the data call the api bind the data and you know that to implement the uh, like api call everything we have to go to app module file and here we're going to implement our call http client module right now let me implement the http client module here like import uh, from at the red angular common http and here we're going to implement http client module right let me import the client module here and you have to know that http client module is always going to be import one and uh, let me also import another uh, call called form module you know that if you're going to use the any model binding you must have to use the form modules into our application let me save it now our application is good now what i'm going to do now we're going to call the api and that api is going to give us the list of country and states and you know that to call the api we are going to must have to create a what we are going to create a service because all the service call we are going to happen inside a service folder let me create a service ng generate service uh, generate service is called country and state let me give the same name country and state if you're going to click country and state if you click on enter it's going to create a service for us into a service second guys i'm going to create a service folder here sorry service folder inside service folder i'm going to create a country state now once you click this one it is going to create a country service folder here and in, inside the service folder you can able to see we have a 
country and states are available right this is the this is our service now in this service we are going to create a two function one function is uh, one function is used to get the list of country and one function is going to use to get the list of states based on the country name now let's go and use this one before that we have to implement the http one right http and http client this one we have to import because without http client we cannot able to implement any kind of things now http client will be there and let's go and do other part we are going to get two function is going to load all the countries and state let's suppose countries now in the countries it's going to return it's going to return list of countries from the api same to same here we're going to return this this dot http get function we're going to call i client uh, sorry i country states and here we're going to call our static api means here you can learn that one thing how to call the static files assets folder into your application here you're going to call dot slash assets slash json json is a folder inside that country dot json see this one guys here you have to know that just imagine uh, i'm giving another tips here suppose you are uh, developing one application suppose your backend is not ready just imagine backend is not ready now how will go and work because if the backend is not ready how you are going to consume the api in that case you have to understand the mockup framework mockup means what whatever api you are consuming suppose you are getting list of um, data which is going to bind your grid now, as a developer what will going to do you are going to create a static json file into your assets okay and here you are going to create suppose just like grid so just like employee.json and here you are going to add all the dummy data as per the structure you have to add structure means you are going to add just a data data suppose this is the name this is the address this is gender this is date of birth this is salary all these things whatever is the attribute is required to bind into your ui you go and define the data here just like i am defining name and code same to same you can define the employee other information or like whatever application developing all the attribute is required you go define here suppose that a page not ready instead of doing that you can bind your local things into your code here you are adding the local things here in future once you get the api you have to replace this one and use your actual api in this case what will happen you are not going to no longer waiting for your um, backend developers <coughs> sorry no longer going to use no longer depend upon backend developer when backend api is ready you will use it if not ready you just create a mock-up json or just create a dummy json and use into your application to use in in, uh, in http if you're going to use any kind of the assets json file or any file what you're going to do are going to use the dot dot means it's always going to depend the root folder now dot slash assets because we are building to assets you know that assets assets folder is going to attach when going to build the application because this is the static file assets inside this you are going to give a path hyper json here you can see that i have given the path of our json just like json slash country dot json because this is country this one so what i'm going to do now let's consume this country service into our component and we're going to use this one already all of you know that let me do one thing now private suppose service is our country service right and here what we're going to do now we're going to see that how the things is going to work now let me load the country okay we're going to load the country now how going to load the country let me write a function private load country okay and here i'm going to use this dot service dot countries and dot subscribe here going to results and in this results we are going to bind these dot country options equal to results right this is the things we are doing and let let load this function into the this dot load country right let me save the application once you save you can able to see that we can able to see india and us here right let just consume if you right click and inspect you can able to see that if you're going to refresh you can see that it's calling this api country this one right now 
now this thing is already cut but we have to select one thing let me do add a blank top of this one blank item top of this one at least we will get a option okay blank item i have added at least you can able to select this one india or us now next part is we are going to bind the state but you know that state is going to bind based on the country value because our json contain india and us now what we are going to do like this drop down we are going to on the change event of this drop down what we're going to do we are going to call the state api this state api is going to bind it now simple now let me create a function called handle a country change now this function is going to call into our this on change event you know that let contain the on change event and sorry change event in change event i'm going to call this function this function name is called handle country change right now what going to do how to get the access to value this code for that reason let me define a um, variable here called country id or country code this is a string default value the blank and this country code i'm going to use here as a ng model okay you know that ng model is used to do the do a data binding right now save it now on the change of this country what going to do we are going to call this function this function calling here we will go simply go and console dot log this dot country code this dot country code now let me save it once you save if you go and go to inspect and once we select this country india you can see that i can able to see the india here if you're going to select us it's going to give the us here right now next part is our based on the selected value we are going to call our api right simple now create a another function is called uh, state i'm mean, state states states and the states we are going to pass the country code right we're going to pass the country code at the string okay you can see that everywhere i have used the proper typing as a developer going forward to write a program always use a proper typing if there is no type use any any always fix that any will come later last means always come at last don't think okay any is giving us we are going to use any no you can see here i am proper following the step like I am creating the class. I am creating interface. I'm using the interface. Why I'm using this is the coding standard you must have to follow because as a developer, or are you going to become a developer? You must have to know that how you are going to write the code everywhere you require. Don't use any keyword. Any keyword I am telling too many times. Any keyword is disaster for the program going forward after six months. You don't know what you written for that reason. Proper way you have going to write the things. Now we have states we are passing the country code now what going to do the country code we have for india and us here what i'm going to do i'm going to bind the data and for that reason i'm going to use this one i'm going to bind the data whatever data country code is coming is coming here okay like us will come us.json india will come india.json as of now we have constant due to that we did this way right now what will happen now in this here we are going to call if this dot country code is available means the country code contain the value then only this dot service the dot states and the states are going to pass the this dot country code dot subscribe you know subscribe is used to call the api and we're getting the results and in the results what we're going to do this dot states option okay states option equal to result pretty much simple right you are also doing the same thing let me save it and we are actually our problem will start now now see this one now first page load is calling the country.json now if you're going to country.json next me uh, call the india you can see that it's called india.json once you call india.json you can able to see that we are getting our all the states and united territory in the states option right same to same if you're going to call the us here now you can see that we are getting the all the us states now let's see the another problem here 
you can see here already we call the India dot JSON. Let me again call it call the India. Now you can see that once you call the India again, it's calling the India JSON again. I know that this is just an example, but for your application, you are doing the same thing, right? On change of country, you are going to call the another API, right? Change of something, you are going to call the another API. But you can see this guys in these two API, there is no difference because if I go and click on this India one, you can see that we can able to see list of response is coming from the our API. Same to same, if you go to last API also, if you go to click, you can also see that we are getting the same response. But the things will be here, request is not changed. Same API I'm calling, same API I'm calling. But the problem is here, if you're going to call this n number of times, you can see that it's calling that API that many times. You can see that it's calling that many times. India, India, US, US is calling. Now here is our problem. The problem is here like how, why we are not using the existing one? Why you are calling the same API again and again? In this case, we are going to discuss how we are going to implement our application in such a way that if one of these API is already called, how the response we can utilize throughout the application. Guys, why we are utilizing application? Because we are using the single page application. Single page application means until and unless if you don't refresh the page, every state you can maintain, right? Everything you can maintain, you can maintain everything in the application. That's the reason we are going to implement this thing. If it is, if the, this is not a single page application, there is no necessity of using the caching mechanism into our application. Now let's go and implement how the caching is help us to achieve this task. Means if I'm going to implement the caching, okay, once I call the India here, okay, if I'm going to call India here, next time call uh, India again, it's not going to call the actual API. It will get the data from our existing existing API. That is the thing we are going to implement the performance because you know that once you, if you're not going to call the same API again, now if you're going to get from the memory, now you know that this is not going to API. Just imagine you have a real API. It's going, not going to the server, not going to execute all these things, not going to do all the things. Now we are going to implement how you can go and use inside this HTTP using the things. Now, Let's go to our actual implementation. Now, whatever we discuss, we just discuss about our problems. Now, let's go and discuss about actual our solutions. Here you can see that because we are dealing with our all the, uh, we are dealing with our all the HTTP things, means all the API, all these things. Now, you guys know that there is a concept in uh, like our um, uh, Angular that is called the interceptor. And you all know that know that interceptor is a functionality which is used to intercept the request and response. That you have to know that. If you don't know interceptor, this is a problem. Now, but we're going to see that we'll discuss our interceptor now. But you know that interceptor is used to create a middleware between your request and response. That's the reason we are going to implement interceptor into our application because due to our request is going to cast and request is going to work that's the reason we are going to see that how the interceptor is used to helps us to achieve this task now let's go create one interceptor and interceptor we are going to implement our caching mechanism okay now to create an interceptor, you can go and manually create. Let me uh, use our um, uh, CLI tool. Let me open the terminal. Let me create here ng generate um, interceptor. Just a second, guys. Interceptor. And uh, here I'm going to create, suppose, um, you want to create, suppose, Casing. Okay, you can see that, guys. Now, if you see this, we have a generate a interceptor. What interceptor we generate? We have generated a interceptor called casing interceptor. Okay, and you know that this is the simple code. Like you have a uh, interceptor, and that interceptor must have to implement the inter HTTP intercept, and this intercept is going to do lot of things for us and here if you implement http interceptor now you know that there is a function called intercept and this intercept contains two things one is request another is next 
now let's go and do what are going to do that now guys you know that whatever request you will send whatever api going to call that is called the request and next means how we are going to handle the request that is called the http handler you have to know these things now in the application you are not going to cache all the things means every url not going to cache you have some selected urls you are going to cache for that reason we have to define that whatever request is coming that request is cacheable or not if that request is cacheable then only we can able to do the caching otherwise we are not going to do the caching for everything just example you are not going to cache the post method you are not going to cache the suppose get suppose you are not going to cache the delete method because these are the real things right people if people submitting something that case it should not be cached but sometimes we are caching the get one just like our example we are going to uh, get this method is a get method right we are going to cache this one now here in http interceptor you are going to write that intercept function or you are going to write that kind of logic which is go and check that whatever request is coming that request is actually need to be cached or not then only you are going to do your operation for that reason let me create a function called is request uh, cacheable okay each request need to be cacheable if it is cacheable then we'll go and um, then we'll go and we will implement our application okay now let's see here is request cacheable means this is going to return true or false let me return type as a boolean okay now is request cacheable means we are going to pass the request here we are going to pass the request here it's going to check the request now how you'll go and access the request value the what is the method of the request here you're going to check that okay if request dot method okay method this request contain a property called method which is going to give you the method whatever you are sending suppose you are sending get it will get get if you go to pass post you're going to pass post now let me here implement this is called the get if the request get i'm saying that i'm only going to request i'm only going to cast the method if it's coming as get guys i'm just implementing here for your scenario suppose you want to cast post also you can do that it's up to you what you're going to cast now if nothing i'm going to return the value called false by default going to return false if the our requirement is going to satisfy then only it's going to be give the true now another things sometimes you need to be cast you know need to be cast everything everything means you know need to cast all the api you have some selected api you want to cast some cases will come right sometimes what will happen you only want to cast this api you don't need to cast the other api suppose you have another api you don't want to cast for that reason also you can add the filter code also here filter code means you will get the request suppose just request dot url this request dot url is going to give you all the whatever request you are sending you will get it here and you can also write your filter code filter code means suppose you want to filter which api you need to fill which api need to be add into caching which api you need to add into caching all these things you can add a filter code but as of now the filter code just if else condition you can write it but as of now i'm not writing all these things i can simply return return true means if my method will be get then i return okay this method this uh, request will be cacheable if the uh, request is not get it should not be cacheable now this here you can write your own filter code guys i left left you how you can go and implement the things you can write your own code here but simply return the true here now what i'm going to do it now in the first i'm going to check that whatever request is coming you know that what is intercept interceptor is going to middleware between request and response now here what we're going to do now we are going to check that if this dot is request cacheable i'm going to pass the request if this is going to return true if you return true we are going to do our work if not if not then simply return request at handle otherwise request dot handle simple just imagine this is the else part if i don't, don't write else part we're going to do the things if request is cacheable okay guys understand if the request is cacheable we are going to do our 
things otherwise we are going to simply do our do our whatever the default code we are going to do that means if request is not cacheable we can do the default work right default work means just next dot handle is used to do the stuff otherwise what will happen we are going to do our actual work now let's go do our actual works understand what i did in the request i have write a condition here if the request whatever request is coming that request is to be cacheable or not the logic you're going to write, write it here and this is going to return true or false if the request is cacheable we are going to implement actual our caching mechanism and if it's not cacheable we'll go and implement our non-cacheable request like you will do the default things whatever default code will be there we're going to write it now now we got it okay our request is caching need to be cash need to be cash okay now here we have to see that okay how can do that how can do caching guys now we are going to use one data structure here that is called the map guys day by day you if you are going to write any program you have to always think about data structure algorithm algorithms is okay that is the logic you have to think but you have to think that which data structure is used for doing which work now here what is my plan i want to do let discuss about the plan then we'll go and do the implementation let me open the microsoft uh, microsoft um, paint here now here you can see that what i'm doing going to do now my objective is now first thing we are getting all the request guys okay, request means we are getting the urls right the which urls going to call now what we're going to do now we are going to create a table here okay we're going to create a table here that table contain two parts what part first part is contain the url second part is going to contain the response okay url and second part contain the response okay now if the url a just imagine there is a uh, list of data going to create just imagine suppose url is suppose india.json just imagine uh, india.json that time the url is contain response or not if response content will get from here just imagine no just imagine no response there is no data is available there is no data available simply go and call the api okay simply go and call the api okay I am calling the india.json and india.json. I am checking that response is available. The in in memory response is available. No memory response is not available. Simply go and call the API. When the API will get give give you the give you the response, right? When API is going to give you the response, then what will happen? What you will do? Just a second, guys. You need to send the request. You need to send the request. And once you send the request, that time you will, you will once you get the response. Okay, you are sending the request and response, and this response you will go and store into this place. Means the response you are going to store in this place. Means you are going to store the response here. Okay, let me write it. You're going to store the response here. Same to same, we'll go for usa.json. This is our API. Just imagine this is API. I'm just writing JSON because you're able to understand the things. Now, first we'll check, okay, responses are available. No, responses are not available. Then go and do the same step. Which step? This step. It'll go and call the API. Once the API will call, API is going to give the response. Once the response will receive, then it will go and store the data here. This is called USA response. And this is the India response next time if you're going to call the same api india.json it will going to check okay response is available yes this is the response is available if the response is available then no need to do this step got it no need to do this step this step uh, this step is already performed by our earlier now this thing we are going to remove and we're going to give the data from our existing response understand guys how what we are going to do now let me repeat again for a better understanding like initially you're going to call the india.json that time we don't have any kind of response because the response is not no longer available into our memory 
that time what we're going to do now we're going to call one api this is the request red the black one is the request we're going to call the api this api url okay now this url is going to give the response once it's going to give you response and this response you are going to store into here okay same to same next time you're calling another api us.json check that available not available call the api and once response will come stored here next time now what how many times calculate first time is got call second time you're going to call then what will happen it will check that okay this is the url now the response is available yes the response is available because already last request we stored the response now here what we are going to do instead of calling this api process request and response we are going to call from our response we are going to call our existing data but you got it clear right this is the way we're going to implement but the things will be okay how we can store this data we are going to store this data we are going to store data in the variable or you're going to store in anything else no guys here you can see that if you know the dictionary if we are going to use that data structure here you have to imagine we are going to use a dictionary concept of thing dictionary means dictionary content if you if you see any dictionary this is content two things one is called key another key is called value key value means key is always be unique and value is going to be value just like a dictionary if you if you know the oxford dictionary any dictionary if you open there is a english word and the english side of the english word that is a meaning of that that meaning will be any language that may be in hindi that may be in english that may be telugu tamil any language that doesn't matter but you have to know that every key in the dictionary always be unique same key like same like english is not going to be sing english word is not going to repeat multiple times because every time you will get one uh, english word and that is the meaning of that for that reason guys dictionary is represented from that like um, this our our application dictionary is inherited from our actual dictionary to implement dictionary what is the dictionary is the use of this one the url for us is the key right for us this url is the key because without url what going to do and for our application the key is always be unique U url is going to be unique the same india json will come we are not going to store because already india json is there for that reason url is for key and value is our response because based on the key we are going to get the value this is the way it's going to work see this one guys key here the url and value is our response i have for previously i have just imagined this way but if you think we are going to use the dictionary key value like that structure into application store this type of value now let's go how we can go and implement this key value mechanism into our application first to use the dictionary into our application in in a um, like in in types like in your javascript you have to use the concept called map map data structure mass map class is data structure which is used to implement the dictionary into our application let me do a variable called suppose cache map okay cache map cast map equal to new map you know that map function is going to take two value key and value as per you discuss you can see here this is going to key and value now we have to define what kind of key and what kind of value data type we are going to use okay first we are going to focus on that then we'll go and discuss about other things now let's go and define what is the key and what is the value we are going to define into our application now here we are going to define our first one is our key key is our string because we are going to store our data in format of url url always going to be string right and next one we are going to use things called response right the response instance will be http response okay it will be http response just a second guys be http response and http response means this is going to whatever response will come from the api that response is going to store inside this http response right got it now this is going to store store the caching value of request and response see this one guys 
Now I have created a cache map. This cache map is going to store the URL here and whatever response will come from here, it's going to store it uh, here. Here, what are going to do that? First, whatever request is coming, we are going to check that that request is that request is present inside the cache or not, just like a fast request. Request request will come, we'll check that this data is exist here or not. If it exists, then we will use, otherwise, it's not going to be used. For that reason, what I'm going to do first, we'll check that. Check request URL is exist or not. For that reason, let me define a variable called URL equal to request dot URL dot to lower string. Why I'm doing lower string? Sometimes, uh, sometimes it will be capital or lower. We are making everything as lower case. Okay. Now, what are going to do now? Check. What are going to how to check? How to check that particular URL is existing cache, cache map or not? For that reason, I'm going to write if this dot cache map. Cache map is the instance of our caching. Then has has function is used to check that whatever key you are going to pass that key is exist or not in our case key is our url you uh, remember now you're going to pass the url here which url which url you're going to get from the request if it's exist then okay if not exist what are going to do okay okay not exist if it exists then we are going to see that okay if you exist the return from this existing value just imagine already exist if exist we are going to get the data if not exist what are going to do now exist part we are going to do later this is simplest part we are going to first do the not exist part if you remember as i told if it not exist we are going to first send the request then from the request we will get the response and from the response we are going to set the value of this key right now same to same now how to send the request you know that to send a request we are going to use next dot handle remember return next dot handle is a function which is used to forward the request to the next for that reason next dot request now here how you know that response is back or not because request is used to send the request right now you have to know that how the response will be back or not you know that in in our application in our all the observables because if you see mouse over here 100 return type will be observables in rxjs observables suppose you want to change anything about the observables then you have to going to use the pipe one you know the pipe pipe is the middleware for the observables it's the rxjs function okay now here what we're going to do we are going to wait for the response okay now you send the request after request will go then what you're going to do you are wait for the response when response come that time you are going to send the value now how going to use for the response then you have to use the tap tap means guys what it's going to check each and everything whatever coming from that particular um, uh, like request right it's going to check that one tapping tap one by one one going to tap which one is our things is going to work then let me tap called event what is event i'm going to discuss as i told tap means is going to tap the response that will going to check each and every response is an object right whatever coming from the server it's a response in the response we're going to check that okay this is a response yes if this is a response then make it set if not response ignore we have to remember that tap is going to check one one well tapping you know that the same tapping functionality this is coming as a tap function and tap is going to check that if my event whatever events is coming from the response is a instance of http response because sometimes your um, uh, like uh, the request may be failed and that that may be sometimes sometimes your request is going to be different different kind of some http progress http failed http error lot of type of different different things will come now what we required if our response is the http response means if whatever coming from the server is the http response then what we're going to do we're going to set the response to the key what key now this dot cast map dot set you know that set function is used to set the data set the key set the dictionary value 
our key is this our key is url right because this is the our key and our response is is called the event got it now just guys what i did same pictorial view i converted to code first i send the request means return next dot handle again i waiting for the response because how going to set it i waiting for response when i put a pipe inside that this pipe is going to add a middleware into observables you know the middleware if the http is the middleware for our http request same to same any observables you are add a any middleware then you can go and implement the pipe there a pipe inside the pipe you get the data i know that in the pipe where people are mostly using the map but here we are using tap tap means it will go and tap one 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 response from the request if yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we won't discuss that one that one now in this case we are going to check uh, the someone act like how what happened if the response got an error now here we're going to check that first we'll go to a good part then we'll go for negative scenario okay now if the if here if the instance of whatever response is come is the instance of http response then we are going to set the cache map here i can see that whatever cache our cache url is url and value is whatever response is come now here we can able to set the things now this is not exist now if exist if exist means if the data is exist then what will going to do let me define a variable called suppose response equal to this dot cache map dot get now get if function is used to get the value from the cache from dictionary if you're going to pass this uh, key then it will going to give you the value this is called the get function now here our key is url you can see that url is playing the most vital role for the all the things because we are caching the url now if the response is there if the response is available simply do one thing not in true because anyhow the url will be there response will be there return off operator or you know off operator in rxjs which is going to convert any uh, like variable anything to observables now you are going to pass a response I know that it will going to give an error because it's it's in the undefined. Let, let me write as HTTP as HTTP response any. Okay, now see that you have to see that here. This is the way it's going to if the data exists, we are going to simply return the value from the cache and pass the cache return the value. Now our HTTP interceptor is completed. Now we'll go and I'll open for the question and question for this one. But let's go and implement this thing first. We'll see the result, all these things. Then we'll go for do for the negative testing and the questions. Okay. Now you know that if you're going to add any interceptor, you need to register that interceptor into our module. For that reason, we'll go to our this one, which one our R dot module files and R dot module files in the provider will go and register this one. To register a interceptor, we are going to write first write the provide. Provide will be HTTP interceptor, right? And then use class. Use class is the function uh, attribute is going to which class is is going to use a HTTP interceptor. Our name is cache interceptor, right? This is our. Just a second, guys. And second, use multi. Uh, sorry multi equal to true because we are in future we are going to use multiple interceptor due to that we are using multi equal to true okay now let's see what will happen if we're going to compile this application it's going to compile successfully now let's see the actual things let me go and put the india here once you click the india it's going to call the api okay next to next call the us here it's going to call the us api let me go and call the india again if you're going to call India again, you can see that nothing is called. You see that no API got called. If you're going to call US also, nothing is called. If you're going to call India again also, nothing is called. Same to same guys, you can see that all the response, if you're going to call n number of times, you can see that nothing is happening, no API getting called. And what will happen? In this case, we are getting all the data from the existing things. Now let do let do one thing guys. We'll go and debug this application and understand what flow we are doing here. 
okay then we will go and open for the question and answer we'll go go next check for the next uh, check for the existing one now open the source also you're going to learn how to debug the things today also you're going to additionally get the debug the things what you're going to do go to your source and this debug is only applicable for a development means for your local not for the production one production one every code going to be compiled you will not get a source map for that one for that reason we will go to source and here press the control p control p is used to open or find the file open the file press the control p and search that the particular file which file you want to put the breakpoint or do the debugging our file will be cache interceptor right if you don't type it will go to automatically come this is our entire cache interceptor code right in this code we'll go and write our things now let's click breakpoint here we'll go and check one by one line okay now guys our ab data is reset nothing is available here our country and everything will be reset let me select an india here you can see that breakpoint is fire okay you know that to go to forward breakpoint, we are going to press the F10. Otherwise, you can go for this one, R1. Next step, F10 also can press. First one, request is cacheable or not. Now, we're going to put the breakpoint here. If we're going to continue, you can see that request is coming. Request method is get. We're going to say that, okay, request method is get. If it's get, then going forward, returning true. Now, the request is getting get. It's true. Now next, go forward. The mouse over URL, you can see that our URL is this one. Assets, this are not India. This is our URL is calling because this URL calling, right? Now, we are going to check that this URL is exist into our cache or not. For that reason, if you go to mouse, mouse over the cache, you can see that. Okay, guys, sorry. This is just a second. Huh? Two times it got called. Let me remove this one. We call the India. Let me go here. And uh, if I go again, cast map. Why this country default is storing? Okay. You can see that our URL is coming at India.json. If it's con coming India.json, you can see that India.json is not exist in this keys. For that reason, it's going to the else part. If you see that, it will go into the else part, this part, right? Once you go to this part, we are going to put the pipe here. If you're going to continue, you can see that it's coming to this one. Now, if you see that type event, what is the event type? It's nothing is there. Let me, it's not instance of HTTP response. Let me continue. You can see that it's coming as HTTP response. If coming as HTTP response, you can see that all the information from the service is coming body what our data is coming headers also coming all the things is coming now here you can see that if you're going to continue it's calling that our response is content http things now whatever response is come here you can go and save it here now continue same to same i'll go and put for the us once you put the us it's going to check that request is cacheable yes now it's saying that request is uh usa if you go to this one you can see that already the request is as cached here no no us is not here right this is only the country and india is here now if you go if you go forward the same thing is happening okay now it's going to check and continue but if you're going to again select the india here what will happen you can see that it is going to check the request is cacheable yes now it will go to check the url url is india.json now you're going to check that this cache is content url or not if you go to mouse over here you can see that this is our url india.json uh, if you cache map you can see that already there is a key called india.json now okay this is content if you're going to forward instead of going to the else part it's going to the exist part right now here we are getting the response once you get the response you can see that we are getting the exact same response whatever response we get previously in this function right now here using the off operator we are simply returning the data you can see that if you're going to return the data it's not going to the this one due to that we are not calling the actual api we are going to consume only the same api here okay this is the way you can able to implement our things now let's do the error function error way error way means let me do one thing 
in our country api let me add is another country is called suppose japan okay and here it will be called japan Japan. Now, in this case, if I go and run this application, you can see that. Just, just a second, guys. Let me remove all the breakpoints here. Now, you can see that we have three countries. Okay, we have three countries here. And let me go and select the Japan. You're going to call Japan. You can see that 404 is happened. Let me go and put the breakpoint here. Now, in this case, we're going to put the breakpoint here event HTTP response, right? Just a second, guys. Let me refresh. And put the breakpoint here. Let me select country called Japan. Once you select Japan, you can see that it's not calling this one. You can see that error is not going to handle here. Error is going to handle in a separate thread. Let me do the same thing here again. Refresh call Japan. You can see that not happening. Because you have to think that HTTP response will not come here if the request is not success in not the 2000 OK because response this is going to handle another error. You are going to add, add a error pipe here. The error pipe you can able to handle. You know how to handle the global error. In that case, we are using the error pipe. That time we are going to use the error pipe. If the error pipe will come here, same as tap pipe, you are going to use the error pipe. Then if any error will come into this particular um, observables that is going to handle there for that reason i have no i have if you're going to implement error things you can go and use the error pipe here uh, sorry error method here of the observables and you can do your task this is the way you can able to manage your success and response i have only did for uh, success because if there is no success there is no need to do the caching right for that reason i simply ignore the error part it's all are the success part okay now before going to the next part, this is open for the questions. Anyone, any doubts, anything, please feel free to ask me. Hope who asked the question regarding the error part, he, uh, like he or she has got clear, right, about these things. Okay, mm -hmm. you're clear, guys. This is the way you need to implement your caching mechanism into your application because just imagine this is a small one. Now, you have you will ask me a question. Why I need to add this kind of logic into application? Because uh, I can simply do a define a variable. I can do a caching on that. Okay, this implementation is for global level. Global level means this is not for only for one API. Into your application, suppose you want to, um, suppose you want to create uh, a global level of implementation for your caching mechanism into, into your Angular application, you can go and use the HTTP interceptor. Always understand one thing. Interceptor, HTTP interceptor you are using. If that interceptor means it's a like um, middleware. Middleware means it's just a middleman between two person, just like this one. It's going to uh, take one person request. It's going to take another person request. Summarize everything, give you a response. Same to same. Anything you want to play with your uh, like anything you are going to play with your HTTP things. Simply go and create a, a interceptor. And that interceptor is going to play anything because you will get a request and and you will get a next. You can go and control everything from an application. What you're going to do, what you're not going to do. Everything is going to happen by these things. Okay. This is the way you can able to think. You know that you, you people are setting the authorization header. You people are using the different, different kind of setting the parameter of a header. All these things you are doing the help of the HTTP interceptor also. In HTTP interceptor also, you are able to handle the global error also. Suppose any 400 error will come. You want to redirect to the suppose um, uh, login page. Some some 503 error will come. You are going to redirect to the different page. Same way, you can write your different different kind of logic in HTTP interceptor, where you can go and manipulate bit by bit of our HTTP things. That's the way HTTP interceptor is most vital role in the application. And you know that if you're going to attend the interview also. The first question everyone is going to ask, like in the after the some basic question, people are going to ask about interceptor. But always you have to uh, like think that interceptor just like a middleman means you have so you have someone. Suppose this is the one request, and suppose this is the um, sorry, this is the response. Okay, this is the response, and interceptor is going to work as a middleman between this thing means 
you can do anything between the request and response for request is coming you can change anything response is coming you can change anything you can change everything between request and response that's the way interceptor is comes to picture not only this http interceptor in future also you're going to learn about the global error handling error interceptor also there who is going to handle all the application error into your uh, angular application this is the way you can able to manage our http interceptor right now guys you can see that how the caching is work in the help us to improve the quality of application programming api going forward if you are working somewhere or you are learning somewhere try to do implement same kind of functionality you can guys this is a basic implementation here you can do write your filter code here you can uh, also write your error code what happen if the error will come all this thing can write it here right in this case go and optimize this code and use based on your requirement that is going to be actual implementation okay now i know that the first one is a little bit longer because i make it longer because first you have to understand all this problem now this is done right and let's go for next one is called google lighthouse i know that few of you know maybe heard about google lighthouse few of maybe not able to heard about google lighthouse and let's understand what is google lighthouse google lighthouse you have to know everything already you know google lighthouse but you never use this one what happened in the google lighthouse guys when this is just a simple application right when you are developing a large scale application now what happened day by day day by day your coding getting increased right how your coding get increase increase your bundle size are going to be increased got it you already know that what is bundle size right click here and go to view source you can see that we have list of files are there here like uh, main.js vendor.js runtime.js polyfill.js polyfill just is doesn't matter but the main.js and this vendor.js file going to increase day by day if you go write much much more code and if you see the size of this code if you go to our compiler if you go and open this one you can see that here they are written what is the size of each and every files this is the thing you have to know you can see that the main.ts is 18 9 18.96 kb and runtime it this is the kb they are written all these things why i am saying all these things guys as it as i told like um, if the day by day your uh, application getting increased like lots of component lots of modules lots of different different pipes directives you are adding now when your code base is going to increase your application size also going to increase but what happening uh, you know that sometimes uh, you will get a chunk error have you ever know what is chunk error sometimes suppose you are using uh, some uh, file is not getting loaded properly in your application you will get the error called chunk error okay what will happen in chunk error in chunk error the entire file is not going to load properly partial file going to load means suppose your size is suppose your bundle size is 2 mb due to your bandwidth is low what will happen instead of loading the 2 mb file at a time the browser is failed to load 2 mb it's only load 1 or 1 1.2 mb or 1 mb apart from that what will happen other 1 mb left due to that you are not able to completely see that page for that what happen you will get a blank page sometimes in angular application if you know that you will get blank page sometimes and that time that problem will happen because you will get the console called chunk error i know that chunk error will not get here because our application is very small only one page time one page uh, application due to that you will not get that much error but if you are working in a company sometimes the you, you go to network do one thing what you're going to do i'll let you know that go to network click on this throttling okay throttling or to click and click here your um, uh, this one which one present fast uh, 3g slow 3g offline offline means you completely discount the internet otherwise you can add a custom profile custom profile means suppose you want to control your network guys i know that this google chrome tool is the god for us as a developer you you must have to know everything this is content end to end of software development I know that if people are maybe used, not non be used, but just understand. Suppose you want to control your network, you have to see that in the lowest network, how my application going to work. That is also a network performance. Okay, third one, don't add, fourth one. Network performance. What is network performance? Understand. 
how you can go and control your request suppose just imagine i going to say you here what i'm going to do let me go to lowest I, i'll define what is lowest i have defined my custom profile and here i'm going to select the india will say that it will take too many times to load this drop down you can see that this time also drop down is not loaded okay after so many times it is getting loaded guys this is called the network throttling means suppose you want to add your custom just imagine how the people are testing how my application going to work in low network for that reason what you will do in the network tab you will go to the throttling one okay throttling one here you can simply click and you can see that by default these are the available fast 3g slower 3g offline offline means you are going to completely offline okay now here you can also add your custom profile what is custom profile suppose you want to set okay i need to work on suppose um, 2 kbps or i want to work on 1 mbps you can increase the speed increase means what will happen like your your broadband content that one but this is used for the your um, uh, like network change like if you simply go and click on the add you can see that you can add your custom profile you can see here for for the demo purpose i have added a bandwidth called west it's so 1 kilobyte per seconds means it, like whatever request will go it will go only for 1 kilobyte per seconds same to suppose suppose you are going to add your own profile just click on add custom profile here you can going to give a profile name what is your download speed what is your upload speed okay in this case what will happen guys now based on that your request going to be happen if you go to the network tab it will automatically get the here you can select your particular uh, which uh, band you want to use which speed you are going to use based on that your request going to work let me do one thing if i refresh now if, if you going to select india you can see it's loading very fast right now same to same if i going to change to lowest you can see that if i going to india it should take too much time you can see that it's going to the request and this is the request right uh, in the network you can see that request is still pending see it here still pending okay now it's coming why it's coming because due to we are added our network performance and this is the way you can able to manage our application performance right now now okay this is the one of the first you have to know this one this is the good tool guys suppose we are developing an application where people are using in the network suppose they are using very mobile network how you can check the mobile network because you cannot check mobile network right to check mobile network you have to use your either you can go for 3g 4g 5g whatever speed you want to go you can add it otherwise you can add your custom profile it's up to you how you can use it okay now next goes to our this part is done network performance okay this part is our done network performance let's go for next one is called google lighthouse in google lighthouse you have to understand what is google lighthouse guys how you know that how your application going to work into the uh, suppose um, in mobile how you know that how our application going to work on different different devices what is the fast paint is going to do paint means like um, painting of your rendering of your application how much time it taking to render the application lot of thing will be there for that reason what will going to do in our developer open the developer tools here you have option called lighthouse see that this is option called lighthouse once you click on lighthouse you can able to see this one let me control zero you can see that this is the lighthouse tool here you can see that we have a option called uh, generate lighthouse report the lighthouse report what you going to do you have to go into select that okay navigation what you going to do is going to use a navigation or not navigation means it's go one by one uh, whatever the url will be there that's going to navigate second and where are you going to run you are going to run on the mobile or you are going to run on the desktop due to we are using the desktop now we are going to use the desktop later we will go and report generate report for the mobile right hand side you can see that we have different different type of things is available suppose you are going to check the uh, like performance how the application is going to be load second one going to check the accessibility you know that accessibility code is used for the uh, disabled people physical challenged people actually basically for the people who are not able to see the things for that you are going to use the accessibility best practice what is the best practice is going to check uh, is your site is seo enabled or not going to check finally if your application progress web app is going to check but you know that 
single page application we are not going to do the seo tag you can simply ignore this one if you want you can do that it's up to you but as of now let me select everything and you can do one thing go to analyze page report once you click the analyze page report what it's going to do it's going to arm up warm up means going to do its own automation script is going to run automation script what it's going to do it's going to run the application going to check the all the things once everything is completed it's going to give you a report and let's see what happening in the case now see now this, this thing guys what happened here now after you run the this our application you can see that this is our application performance we, we don't have pwa progressive web app for that is getting reachable we know that our application is not good for seo for that is getting 89 percent but accessibility best practice is perfect because we are not using anything that's the reason accessibility but you can see that performance is getting down performance some of the company they are saying that light cell performance must be greater than 80 percent that depend upon now we'll see that how the things is going to be affected by us what happened in the caching it's saying that performance value of the estimate can our performance source is calculated all this thing fast content paint this is called fcp first understand what is fast content paint guys fast content paint means First, understand fast content paint. Guys, understand what is a fast content paint. This is the most important part. As a web developer, you have to know all the web browser things. Means, what happened when the browser is going to load the first time your application? First time. First time means before displaying anything, what happening in your application that is called fast content paint. Means displaying the fast content to you. How much time it will take? It's taking 2.7 seconds. That is not good. It should be always be milliseconds. It's always going to 2.7 seconds. That's the reason it's going to be content paint. Why it's happening, guys? Because we are using our development build. If you go for a production build, it definitely is going to be increased because you know that in development build, we are getting the lot of our uh, source map file because without source map we cannot going to uh, we are not going to do any kind of debugging for that reason we are going to use the concept called uh, like the build if you implement this same thing using the production build this value is going to be changed for that reason we have to understand but after also that if a bundle size will be increased this is going to be problem for that reason what we are going to do now here you have to see that fast content paint this is always happen when the first time the application is going to be load. Okay, this need to be improved. Speed index. How your application going to be uh, speed? Guys, okay, the speed is going to vary because as I told, we are doing the development build. This is going to be things we're going to be change. And largest content paint full, uh, paint full uh, content full paint means how many time we going to uh, like this is going to slow the network and check that how much time taking the content to load. That is called the largest content paint, and this is going to take three seconds. Time to interact. How many time it is used the light cell to interact with the application? It's in 2.8 seconds. I'll run again. You will see that this tennis is going to be changed. All this thing displaying. Okay, if you go and view tree map, you can see that this is the tree map. How? What are the things getting uh, taking time? You can say that vendor.js is 2.3. Like MB. If you go here and click on the view tree map, you can see here this is the this is the things called vendor js 2.3 MB. Just imagine to download the 2.3 MB, how much time will it take? Just imagine. If a network will be slow, it will take much more time, right? For that reason, it will always take based on your size of your JS file, everything going to depend. For that reason, if you're going to do for the production build, the size will be less. But if you go for development build, you're going to run the light cell. Now it will be a little bit more difficult because you know that development build create a lot of different different files. Due to that, the size will be increased. Now you can see that it is the core JS taking this much time, and uh, all these things taking this much time. How many time required to load this file? 
how much times polyphase is getting allowed, all these things are creating here. You can see that. This is the whole source tree. You can go and see that which library taking how much time, what is the size of the things, all these things we will discuss here. For that reason, you can simply go and click the view um, tree map. View original source, you can see that what is the things. It's saying that loading take 25 milliseconds. Means you have to see like that. They are saying this is taking this much time. You have to understand which thing taking how, how much time. 25 milliseconds taking loading, 287 milliseconds taking scripting, rendering, painting, system, idle, all these things you are displaying here. In the same way, you can see the performance also got major. Each and every performance of your application, how many time taking the network, vendor just loading, how many times you're taking to load the main application, all these things are displaying here. Apart from that, if you go to the this one, you can see that this is the screen they have attached here. What is the screen? Okay, this these are the screen actually they have attached. It's not able to view. These are the screen. Okay. They are saying that these are the testing they have did. All these things they have did, like this, 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 this content they are doing. And uh, what is the opportunity? How can go and fix it? Enable text compression. They are saying that we are going to enable, enable text compression. You can see that only vendor dash polyfill just these files has problem because guys, why? Because this is a development build, but production build is going to solve. Minified JavaScript. We are, we are going to minify JavaScript because you know that production build, there is no minification will happen due to that. This is taking the minified. What is the use of this one, guys? This is going to show the error as well as it's going to say that what problem we are going to be solved. They're saying that, uh, like, uh, uh, they're going to say that reduce or new JavaScript. Reduce or new JavaScript means what JavaScript, uh, like, uh, we are going to reduce the JavaScript. Uh, what are the JavaScript going to reduce, guys? This thing we cannot reduce because this is the default one. Because, because this application, this um, light cell is global for everyone. Due to that, you are saying that okay, these are the things are not used, these are the things are not used, they are saying. But we are not going to focus on this one. We are going to focus always this one. How we can go and compress the file, how we can go and minify the file, all these things. Okay, remove duplicate modules. They are saying that some modules are there which is duplicate. Simply ignore this one. Same way, you can see a lot of things will be here. But if you go to the diagnostic, it's saying that these are the you can see everywhere these files are there why because these files are the development built due to the taking the problem and let me do one thing guys what i'll do you can able to understand this thing and you can get the all the suggestion here based on the suggestion you can go and work with your changes but how you can go and work with it? because you have to create a component you have to create all these things you have to focus on that right we'll discuss how you can go improve all these things apart from that what i'm going to do now let me create another audit report. Another audit report, let me do one thing. Let me again run. We'll see that. You can see that previous one, 67. This one, 66. So many times you're going to run, your application going to be give you different, 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 different kind of results. Why? It's always going to be based on a network. It is always going to be based on how much code you're writing, all these things. For that reason, you have to always imagine the whatever you're generating the report, right? That report is maybe very one or two percent all the time. But don't think that one. You have to think that what are the suggestions the lighthouse given to you and how you can go and fix that thing into your application. That we're going to discuss. And I can see 68. If you see the three performance here 67 sorry here the 67 here the 66 here the 68 this one is going to vary five one two percent or three five to four percent is going to vary all the times don't think about this thing always think what happening here what is the error how many time is taking what is the things they are saying we are going to fix it let's go learn the last one is the mobile one how your application is going to look into mobile to go click on a mobile now click on analyze report it will go and run the application inside a mobile it will going to see that how your application is um, that called uh, uh, like proper align how we are going to use the responsive designing all these things but our application doesn't contain any responsive design for that reason it's not going to show that much difference but if you are developing an application that application 
is used to use your mobile device also how your application going to pop on into mobile that is the use of this one you can see that performance is totally zero they are saying that nothing is work what happened okay they are saying that chrome does not collect any screenshot during the page load because all these things they are saying all this kind of stuff because our application is not uh, fit for the mo mobile due to that it's happening let's run another time we'll see anything will happen or not guys always understand this lighthouse tool is not like anything you did mistake no no, no. this is all about what actually happen hap will happen if someone going to run the application into their machine because for your for you it's not going to show anything right but for a normal person how it's going to behave that's the reason you how you going to test due to that we are going to use the concept called lighthouse okay lighthouse you can test it here you can use the chrome dev tool that is a dedicated site you can see that now it is 39 percent you can see that what happening here is taking 15 seconds to load the page this is the way we can see all the changes we can able to improvise our application okay now i'll do one thing let me remove everything whatever report is got created now we'll see this is the things now the problem will be after you see all these things how you can go and improve the things for that reason we are going to implement the concept called lazy loading you know that lazy loading is a functionality is available into our application because if you are going to combine your all the components into one module the problem will be when the application is going to start it will create a larger content for that reason you know that in angular we have a concept called lazy loading we are not going to implement any ledger loading concept here but just want to tell that to improve your application speed we need to know the ledger loading functionality because just imagine now we have only one component here that, that is called the country state cash country state just imagine we have a hundred component and all the hundred components is going to bind into the app module and when the application is going to build that time what will happen it's going to add everything for us like it's going to create the all the files into our application that time the file size the bundle size is going to increase for that reason when going forward going to create an application just create the multiple modules based on a requirement and in that module just going to add your own component don't add all the components into one module create a different different modules and add the respective component into that model what will happen you know the lazy loading means it's going to load that particular module on dynamic way right into a dynamically for that reason our application guy application going to be a little bit more faster that's the way if you are developing an application don't use the comp all the component in one module you have to create different different modules and use that module into our application okay this is the one way third one okay last one guys i know that you get a little bit we'll go for break that one is build don't do any kind of development build development build is just for your local development don't do that development into the production in production for you'll go for the ahead of time compiler that is called the our production build you know the ng like ng build build hyphen hyphen prod which is used to like um, do the production build for the application and i know that when when you go to do the production build it will go and do the production build for application and it will remove all the unnecessary code whatever code is required that code we are going to use in our application i'll show that how it's going to work and we're going to run uh, we'll see that what is the file size of this particular production build and we'll see that how it's going to work now let you can see that ng build hyphen hyphen prod is used to do the production build for the application once you do the production build now it will going to generate a bundle for us bundling means it's going to compile the application after compilation it's going to create a package and that package is going to create a folder into our dist folder here we're going to create a dist folder and inside the dist folder it's going to place all the files we'll see this one last one okay 
So once you do the production build, you can see that everything got uh, created and you can see that how the size is drastically changed. Okay, we will go to list folder and here you can, if you go to open the folder, you can see that this is your dist application. If you go and click the properties, you have to see that the total application properties is 2.84 KBs, right? Now to open this one, you can see that all the files are here. You, you can see that style, there is no styles. Only main.ts is more more to 30 KB. Let me do one thing, guys. Open this index.html into our uh, our this one. Right click, open a live server. We'll see that what happening here. Just a second, eh? Now this application need to be host somewhere. But what I did. Just a second. Okay. Now, this is our application, right? Now you can see that if I go to light cell and uh, desktop, analyze the page. We'll see this one. This is our production version. Okay. We'll see this one. Guys, see this one. You can look into our performance of application. How this is drastically changed. Everything is load under the things. That's the reason I show you. If you do for the actually the light cell should be work in the production version, not in the development version. Because development version means you know that lot of junk files will be there for development support. You have to check your uh, application into the production version. Then only it's going to work. For that reason. Once you do the production build for application, just install one, just install one, <coughs> sorry, the extension called live server, live server, okay. Live server means you can open any uh, HTML file into live, no need to run any command. Live server, to do the dist, go to the here, right click and open with the live server. But one thing you need to change, the index.html file, that is a base HREF will be there. Here, just pass your dist folder slash your project name because why it's happened because it, this file should be known that where it exists. For that reason, you have to put this. This is the shit. This is the uh, standard you have to follow. After that, run the application into local and you'll see that do the light cell. And after light cell, you can see that how this is going to work. Okay. This is the way you can able to see our application. Look how this is our performance increased to 100 percent previously. 60 to 68 we have that um, number now to increase the performance but why 100 percent guys because we have nothing here right we are not doing anything but due for that reason our application contain only one page due to that it's faster but day by day day by day you are uh, like um, the component getting added the performance is going to be a little bit down because how much files will be there how much size will be there that much it will going to be problem for you okay not problem means it's going to be increase the decrease the performance of your application clear okay now we'll go for the security one okay guys first understand what is security okay now security means just not like you are going to enter the username password and you go to authenticate you will go to implement security that is called security but in angular security means because you know that if uh, all the application going to enter from a screen screen means suppose uh, uh so just like um you are um you are developing an ui and the ui you have a and text box which is going to use to suppose uh, enter the some value and what happened the the attacker the person who is a little bit technical what he'll do uh, he or she will going to do that he's going to add some kind of script there which script javascript script or some kind of javascript loop or some kind of code is going to inject now now if the code is going to inject now what will happen 
Now, how the our Angular application going to handle that things? Just example. Suppose, uh, suppose I have a text box. Okay, I have a text box, and a text box. I have uh, going to enter text box to open. I can go and enter anything, right? Suppose I'm going to enter here this script. This script. Script. Alert. Hi. And this text box value, I'm going to bind into a div. Okay, I'm going to bind into a div. Here, this text box value, I'm going to bind into a div. And if you're going to bind a div, means Suppose I bind here text box value, text box value. Now, this text box contains this tag. Now, what will happen? This tag goes to print here. Now, if I'm going to run this application, now it should be display script alert high. Now, you can see that if I'm going to print this script high, now it's going to display script print this high. Now, the problem is, you know, if this tag is used to display the alert, right? Now this is called the pro this is the problem here. This is a security fault. This kind of issue is called XXX means cross site scripting. Understand? The first attacker is going to do that. That attacker is going to inject some JavaScript code, and that JavaScript code is going to run into your application. That is the things is going to happen. The Cross sites, uh, cross site scripting. That is short form called XSS. Now let's understand how Angular is going to handle this cross site scripting into our application. For that reason, what I'm going to do now, let me create a delete this one, not required. What do we do now? Let me create a component here. What component? Suppose uh, let me add a component. ng generate component called security. Okay. It's called, called security. Now you can see that in SRC, in app, we got a component called security. Now let's do one thing. Simple, we'll do a basic design now. What we're going to do? Let me in app component instead of this app country. I'm going to use here app security. Okay. We have two components available. One is um, one is a um, uh, country another one is our security the okay, security we're going to print it here let me as of now let me comment this one okay because we will only go focus on the security part okay now let's see what we're going to do in security let me create a text box simple text box text box like text area text area will be here and some button is here so and create a variable called suppose text value or simple as value and a string a string default value will be blank and uh, and click function suppose so value to the function on this here we are going to bind ng model that's called value and the button click so value right pretty much simple right and here on that we're going to do the next work now what i'm going to do it here now in the console the console let me increase In here, whatever going to enter here, right? If you click on so, it's going to display. Now I'll do here thing. I'm going to create a, a span here. Let me do. I'm going to add a div here. In a div, I'm going to bind 
the whatever value we have going to bind it okay now if you're going to enter hello it is playing hello because we have bind this hello data to here right now let's see let me enter script script and alert hi guys but we should expect that this should be display as a normal javascript because it's a javascript code right finally everything going to display here it's javascript code because browser know only javascript html css but why displaying this way okay why is not why displaying this way why is not displaying the alert because if i go and in button click if i go to write here code called alert hi then if i go and click the button here you can see that it's displaying the hi displaying the high one right but if i go write code here like script script and alert hi it should be display alert right because we are javascript code are ejecting because if you go and write any javascript code in your code you have to most have to put the script script tag right but why it's not working here now let's understand the problem here not problem the understand the angular architecture here how angular is going to work with this kind of script guys you know that this one this one means this two curly bracket what is the use of curly bracket it is used to bind the data right it's used to bind the data into our html means it's used for the display purpose one thing you have to understand always whatever you are binding using the two curly bracket that one is not going to work okay that one is not going to do any kind of javascript operation it's just like a string means here this is a this is actually text now here you can see that this is presenting as a text only means whenever you are using the two curly bracket you have to understand that this is not going to execute any kind of script or any kind of operation this is just like a string append how you are entering a data here right how you are entering data here same to same whatever you are going to bind including the two curly bracket now this is going to be work as a data binding only there is nothing going to change at all you cannot execute anything all this thing because that is the default functionality of our angular means angular is inbuilt contain the security architecture but we'll discuss one by one what the things will be there but first thing you understand when you're going to bind the data into your HTML, into your uh, html if you're using the two curly bracket automatically the browser means automatically the angular convert everything to string this is not just like a, okay script tag going to execute no everything going to display as a string due to that whatever writing here that is displaying here this is not executed okay now let's go for next one let me add another div okay another div and inside div what i'm going to use i'm going to use the inner html okay inner html if you don't know what is inner html i let you know that inner html is used to set the html content of a div span all these things save it what i'm going to do let me copy the same thing script tag and i'm going to enter here guys see what happened here you can see that this div whatever div we have added this is not displaying any content but if you're going to add here before that hello but you can see that this first one what are doing we are doing if you see the code side by side we can able to see all these things just a second guys just a second
let me okay we'll see side by side comparison then we'll be able to understand okay let's see this here you can see that we have this script right understand this script we are going to write and in this script whatever writing we are displaying here but i am using the inner html in inner html you can see that if i going to same value i am printing here but what happening is display is not displaying anything it's not displaying anything but the problem is here it should be display right but it's not displaying but if i going to add hello but you can see that it displaying the content but apart from that nothing is displaying so let's understand this thing why is this thing happen why in the two double curly bracket the data is whatever script we are writing why is displaying and why in the case of inner html is not working first understand the internal mechanism of a angular guys when you are as i told earlier if you're going to use double curly bracket then whatever you're going to bind in between that whatever value you're going to pass in between that you have to open the java the angular going to convert everything to string because this is going to represent as a string only for that reason is printing uh, printing as it is but inner html is the one of the attribute of a div which is used to set the html context you know that html is also contain the information called what the information called uh, you can add a, a html tag like suppose bold italic uh, style you can add everything they are treating this is as a html and what happening here in the angular is internally doing the xxt verification xx verification that sanitization or that verification is going to check the content and remove the content from here remove the content from the our whatever text just example here due to hello is there hello displaying due to this is a script tag this is not displaying why not displaying because this is a javascript code but let me do one thing let me enter here hello world i want to make this thing as bold then what i'm going to do i'm going to make it a bold tag and i'm going to end as a bold tag you can see that it is working right this is working but you can see that here due to this bold tag bold tag you can see that this is displaying just a bold now you can imagine difference between property binding means data binding as well as the property set if you are using the two curly bracket now it will going to represent everything as a string you can add all the code here everything is going to treat as a string due to that whatever you are written here is displaying as it is but if you go to the inner html part you can see that here i have written this code called b like um, bold tag inside that i have written world for that reason you can see that it's convert to world to this italic part now you understand sometimes you require to display some dynamic html control inside this inner inside your page then you have to think about this two way the thing is in case of property binding everything is a string in case of inner html whenever you're going to set any value not only inner html everywhere in the angular if you're going to send any property value any value then internally angular is going to check each and every security for the application okay now let's do a little bit more enhancement these things what will go we'll do we are going to use the style tag you know style tag is used to okay is used to display some style right let me what i'm going to do i'm going to if nrg bold is there okay i want to make it color red can you understand simple html string right style you got it this is your style bold or whenever the b tag will be there the color will be red let me do this thing is let me make it strong you know the bold should be strong tag same to same thing anywhere will be strong will be there but that is going to be changed to red pretty much simple right you can see that this is the normal css tag now here i should expect that this is must be a this should be display as red right but if i go to here let me copy this same code copy here same code and 
I go to our style.css and I'll write strong color red. Okay, go and save your all these things and see that it's displaying hello world as a red. Why is it displaying, displaying red, guys? Because I have made the strong as red. But the same thing I'm doing. I'm not doing any other things. What I'm doing, instead of writing this code here, what I'm doing, I'm making the script tag here only. Okay, like style. Then this is the things and here. Sorry guys, just a second. Add a style. And here I'll write strong. Strong means the strong tag. But what happening here? The light suppose strong color equal to red. Understand this thing. Here you can see that everything is working. Okay, forget about the first one. First one you already know that whatever you write is going to display, nothing going to be changed. But second one you can see that why it's not becoming a red. It should be a red because we are printing in our HTML. Now let's understand why it's not working. Two things you have to un always understand in case of when you're going to set a inner HTML means when you're going to display any kind of stuff into your HTML, as HTML content apart from this two color bracket if you're using any parameter as an HTML text you have to always think two things what are the things first one this angular internally will remove the style tag okay internally it's going to remove the style tag it's not going to use the style tag at all it's going to ignore apart from that okay apart from that this inner html or any, any property binding this third uh, input one is going to ignore the script tag two things is always going to ignore one is style tag one is a suppose one is your um, uh, script tag this two tag is automatically going to ignore by your it's your angular this thing you must have to know this is a, there is a cause behind that what is the cause cause is because due to someone going to write some kind of style someone going to add because this is just like a script tag right start and end just like a script tag there is a regular expression maybe there they are going to start the style and all these things they can remove all these things this is the way angular work internally the security but sometimes guys you require this kind of implementation what kind of implementation and sometimes you are uh, calling one page calling one api that api is going to give you the html content now what you are going to do you are going to display that html content into your application okay just like a help document suppose you are creating one page and that page there is an icon there is a button if you're going to click the button that a pop-up should be open and that pop-up going to display a help document and you know that help document going to contain the list of different 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 styles because something heading ul li lot of thing will be there it's content some kind of coloring some kind of things will be there now that kind of html how we can use because if you go and put inside the inner html also you can see that this is not going to work because this is simply ignoring the style sheet simply ignore the script tag but as a developer sometimes you require to develop that type of things then how you can go and develop that kind of application to your project. Now let's go understand what is called DOM san sanitizer. What is called sanitize? And all you know the what is sanitize because recently we all are used the sanitizer in our COVID. Same to same, what is the use of sanitizer? Sanitizer is going to use to remove the germs, right? Same to same, in, in case of our Angular, how we can go and dealing with the this like miscellaneous code or this same kind of like the injection code like this, these are the injection code right how you can go and work with the excess code into our angular understand the problem the problem is i want to make this strong this wall as a red but i have written the style tag but what happened guys due to style tag is uh, is ignored by the application then it will simply go and uh, ignore that one is only work the strong tag but we'll see that how into our application we can enable this style tag throughout the angular okay now 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get two variables here. Okay, one is let me write here uh, H2. Okay, we're going to write uh, original. Okay, H2 after sanitize. Okay, we're going to display two things. Let me copy this one, guys, for reference. I'm going to write the same thing again and again. Okay, now what are going to do? Let me define if I go to here into our code, let me define a variable called suppose um, non sanitize HTML. And this is a any. Let me define any here. Okay. Sorry, it's a non actor. Sorry. original sanitize content non sanitize content and here i am going to use this non sanitize html here okay two things perfect now what going to do in in suppose so value or so value function you know button click or so value what going to do we are going to convert whatever we are going to extract the value from the value to get a non sanitized html for that reason what going to do we are going to implement we have to implement dom sanitizer service what we can do that okay what we're going to do that you are going to create a uh, you are going to inject a um, class called dom sanitizer and in DOM sanitizer, going to create an object. Now this object is going to play, play around it. What are going to do? First of all, we are going to convert because by default the, the this JavaScript is going to use the sanitize one, right? For that reason, what are going to do? Now this dot sanitize the instance of sanitizer. Then by security trust HTML bypass security HTML. Now what are you going to do? You are going to bypass the security. Bypass the security means you are not going to use the angular default security mechanism. You can bypass that one for that reason going to pass this dot value. Okay, let me store this dot value to this dot non sanitize HTML. We'll discuss back here. Now bypass security HTML means it's going to ignore the security mechanism of HTML security mechanism of angular and it's going to return the value from here. Now let me save this one guys. Okay, set this one. We'll see side by side. After that, you can see that what happened. Okay, no, not this one. Just a second. Okay. Now we have two here. Let me copy this same text. Okay, and put it here. And you can see that what happening once we put it here you can see our nothing is working let me click on so see this one got it it's now convert this thing to our sanitize one okay this is the report because due to the same variable report it got changed but you can see that this is working this way means you learn here one thing if you are going to implement if you don't do anything for angular then what will happen angular is going to do its own work own security principle but if you are going to bypass the security bypass security means without using the cross check of the security then this is going to work the bypass security trust html this function is used to bypass the default security behavior of angular to the normal HTML. Whatever you're going to write it is going to work. Just let, let's try for the script one. Now if you're going to write the script. Okay. Is working or not? You can see that it's just convert to okay button click okay we'll do one thing 
write a function here javascript function just imagine so in the show function we are going to write a alert button here okay and here going to write a button click me so that button is there on button on click we are going to call the function called so so error is coming what error okay some error is coming but you can see that this is working perfectly means you can see here one thing guys if you go to here and if you go inspect you can see that everything is working as expected you can see that everything is working. means every data is convert to non style to like non html to is html format that is only happen using this command bypass security toast html this is you have to remember uh, this is available inside the dom sanitizer without dom sanitizer you cannot do it this is and one thing this is a very risk to use what risk to use suppose someone is going to inject some code is going to execute for that reason before using this one you make sure that whatever value you are passing to this function that value must be a trusted value that must be content html that is fine but make sure that that content always be trusted value. otherwise someone going to inject some code because bypass security means this is not going to do into our hand that is totally a normal javascript code and you know that all the external javascript code can directly run and execute into our browser for that reason what will happen before using this bypass trust url then you must have to sure that this is going to be work this is going to be trusted value okay this is the one way you can go and implement the use of dom sanitizer for the html content got it this is the this is the one of the way right now next go for next one what I'm doing, going to do now here, I am going to suppose display a uh, YouTube video here. Okay, I'm going to display. I'm going to display YouTube video, and in the in the YouTube video, we are going to enter the um, video ID, and that video ID going to display inside the iframe. Okay, now display that part once. Let me do one thing. I am going to open our uh, Synotech. Um, youtube channel okay i'm going to open the synotech youtube channel and in the youtube channel you have lo lots of video let me go for this angular angular 12 hour course okay this is this is one of the course let me open okay then what we're going to do now guys this is our youtube id right this is our um, you can say that this is our uh, video id this is the url right now if you go and click it here share you can see that we have embed option here right if you click on embed you can see that this is our iframe embed if i'm going to copy this one and uh, in the browser the browser means here if i go and paste it if you're going to save you can able to see that we can able to see that video here right perfect you can able to see this video here now let's make it a little bit dynamic what dynamic going to do let me add a text box here in the text box we are going to uh, click a button there we're going to enter the uh, video id once you click the video id click on the show we are going to display the iframe data here we're going to try multiple video id and going to display the multiple data here okay simple now for the reason let me add a div here guys let me div add i am going to add an input type uh, text and we have simple and a button suppose so video okay and here what I'm going to do now let me use the same value okay ng model uh, sorry ng model value same value we're going to use on click or button click suppose here click so video okay let me create a function Let me create the function show video function show video and okay, do one thing suppose uh, let me define a variable called youtube url and it will be string by default blank 
okay and the button click what going to do now we are going to prepare this url okay let me copy this one okay now what are going to do now here this dot youtube video url equal to paste it and make this this one will be dynamic what dynamic value should be this dot value because this dot value we have bind into our url right now youtube url we're going to copy we're going to write a uh, ng container here ng if if the youtube video will, URL will be there then simply go paste it here and here src we are going to pass that youtube url right simple one and perfect got it a simple like youtube url youtube url that on button click i'm setting the youtube url with the value whatever value we have entered we're going to set it right now let me save once you save you can able to see now we are going to enter the url first okay let me copy this one this is our id right this is the youtube video id copy this one and go here sorry sorry guys copy everything this is our id let me here enter due to two reference call you got enter now show value show video why is not showing anything if you go to inspect you can see that some error is displaying you can see that on save value used in resource url context now let's understand this is one of the security thread we develop very basic things right we have a text box we are going to enter a video id and click on the show video in the code we are hitting the youtube url as this url and this youtube url we are going to set into our html how how much pretty much is very uh, easiest one right but you can see that if you're going to enter the url and I click on the show video but you can see that this error is throwing okay now let's understand this problem whenever you are setting the src of this iframe and here you are referring to a external external like uh, like um, resource like one page link right now what happened here guys if you set this one now this url if i go and print this one okay if i go and simply go and print this youtube url let's see what happening here okay you will see it is looks like very pretty much simple right it looks like very okay this is the same url if i go and open this url in a new tab it may be displaying the angular embedded one right? okay but why is not displaying here why displaying all these things now let's understand the internal mechanism of angular security in angular security what will happen when you are preparing any url and with this url you are going to pass into your html now that time you must have to do the sanitization for that sanitization by default angular going to do the sanitize sanitize means it's going to like uh, clean the all the bugs now what happened this time this is going to use as a on save value we're going to add you this one saying that you are someone going to be uh phishing phishing means someone going to give a like bad url for that for that reason what happened it's going to throw an error for the application we cannot pass a url directly to the application if the url is outside the application let's understand one other things but you know that you will say that okay in the src also i can pass the image url then why it's not throwing error why it's accessing for this one and let's understand the what is called a resource url then see that error is showing that on save value for resource url resource url means we are setting in the src property the src property we are setting and the url is the in a deferred embed because we are using iframe right the iframe src property they are saying that that must be sanitized sanitizing that must be a trusted url but the problem is due to our angular is removing the trusted uh, during sanitization that time it's gotten change in this case how we can go and use the exact url here for that reason guys what we're going to do we are going to use the new concept is called this dot service sanitize dot bypass trust url okay now if you go and pass this one what will happen this one it's going to bypass the security test for us let me define is the any it's angle define any 
you are see that it's going to bypass the trust resource you are if you're going to pass this or something you're going to bypass this one if you're going to save this one and if you're going to pass the video id here and if you're going to click on so you can see that now it's displaying this one okay guys this is the way you can able to set the things you can see that what is doing you can if you print you can see it's doing set must value use property okay property this is the binding they are doing this kind of binding if you go to this url you can able to see all these things but you can see that when you are doing the sanitize when going to bypass the security then it's going to generate a different kind of direct link to you for that reason you can able to see this iframe now you you understand like how we can display a simple binding at a time to iframe external url you have to do the bypass the security yeah this is the way you can able to do the bypass security and apart from that there is a lot of function will be there sanitize by bypass we will on trust uh, resource url bypass script you suppose you want to bypass the script you can script then bypass the security trusted you can secure trust the style same way you can able to maintain the different different different, different stuff same way is just going to bypass the script it's going to bypass the url internal url it's going to bypass the style it's going to bypass the script it's going to bypass the resource url it's going to bypass the html I have defined two method here and two method I have shown the example how it's going to work same way you can go and implement other things whenever you require you can use that one this is the way you can able to implement the security functionality into your application but the security is going to check about how you are going to use by default angular inbuilt access security and that security you are going to use but if sometimes if the requirement will be different all these things that time you can go and use the dom sanitizer one and dom sanitizer is going to remove and all this bypass the security of your application okay you can see that what's saying dom sanitizer help preventing cross-site scripting security uh, by sanitized value to be saved to use different different dom context Based on that, you can use into a program. You can read a little bit more into Angular side. You can go learn about all these things. This is the way you can go and implement security and bypass the security using the Angular. Okay. Got it. Now, what we learn about now? We learn about what is uh, sanitize, what is sanitize, and what is the how is the how you can go and manipulate the sanitizer. And okay. One thing I'm going to going to give you a tip: don't use anywhere get element by ID. Just example. I'm going to give an example. Suppose here a button, right? Suppose let me ID put the ID here called suppose video txt video. Okay, txt video. On button click, what I'm going to do? Let me let me comment this code, guys. We are going to use document dot get element by id i'm going to pass here this is called support txt video let me call const txt video equal to this one but i know that all of you are using this get element by id get element by name into your uh, javascript one when you're using javascript that time going to use but what i'm going to say here no need to use this kind of code suppose xyz so video you can see that never go and use this doc get element by id function okay why i'm saying because when you are going to use the real dom code this is javascript code when you go and use a javascript code then there is no involvement of angular here because if you are using javascript code only there is no involvement of angular means angular don't know what you are doing because if you are going to process of angular then process then angular know that what you are using if you don't using any angular things your dad using javascript stuff there is, there is no import there is no involvement of angular before using the direct our javascript code into angular project make sure that is that achievable using the angular or not if not then in that case you can go and use the this thing but I am seeing the 99.99 times the Angular can do all the things. But if there is any extra or any kind of difficult task will be there, then you can go and achieve using the JavaScript code. But always try, guys, don't use this DOM element. This DOM element, another JavaScript is called element ref. You guys know what is element ref will be there? Element ref. This class before using element a wrapper around a native element inside a view means 
this is same as they get remember id before using element ref also you must have to ensure that whichever element you are using that element must be trustworthy means the data should be come that will be trust data otherwise don't use get element by id and sometimes don't use this element ref element ref means security permit direct access to dom got see that what is the problem here element ref permit direct access to dom can be application more vulnerability or access attack for that reason this element get element by id or get element ref are more dangerous for the application where someone going to use for that reason before using this thing you must have to sure that is that actually use of that one or not otherwise don't touch this one that will be problem if you go anywhere you can mouse over you can see all these things right you can see that this is a security problem here and here you can see that element of your code carefully review any use of element ref into code for more details because once you use this one right you can do everything just imagine what i'm going to do now i'm going to do eval function eval function you know that what is the use of eval function is going to evaluate anything okay just imagine as html input as any okay now what i'm going to do now let me save it and uh, let me write our same code alert hi Can see that what happened here you can see guys how this is working if someone going to inject a code from the button click you can see that without adding any code here simple one function can be going to executor code just imagine what dangerous use of this one okay because due to i have access the direct uh, element i can get the value i can use the eval i can do it let me copy this one okay what i'm going to do now same previous example what i'll do let me uh, copy this code our this code right now in this code you can see that if you go and write a script tag and script tag here i can do one thing eval uh, alert hi this this thing is people can able to people can able to do the this kind of script code they can inject and you can able to run the application for that reason going forward never use same kind of code because this is a one of the injection code eval means is going to evaluate is going to execute the code for that reason no need to use this kind of code for that reason always be trusted don't use get element by id and don't use element ref if there is no that much use otherwise you can use it okay this is the way you can able to prevent the uh, dom sanitizer okay this is the additional thing you already got it like how it is going to work and second last thing will be this one the router security and you all know that we have the concept calls uh, router security router guard and use the router guard you, are, you have can activate can activate child all these things will be can deactivate all these things will be there before someone going to click one of the url you must have to set that that user has permission to access that url or not you can write your own logic but that is the application level okay but as a trusted level as a programmer level before going to use all these things you make sure that you no need to use all this direct api angular react view they are creating a wrapper top of the javascript code they are saying that no need to use the same code again and again no need to use the javascript code directly for that reason what you need to do you need to use their own library you have to use their own class you have to use their own function 
don't write any kind of javascript function because you know javascript that is not a good ideal position for the things okay now before going to next guys one request to all of you because i have already sent you the uh, our uh, review one please go and write a review for me if anyone uh, find any difficulties anything please let me know i can see only one person write the review other one didn't write the review please go and write the review for me if you like the course or any suggestion you require anything please let me know yes i'm sending the chat then we'll go and discuss about the question and answer part i'm going to discuss what other things we're going to perform in the case of angular okay now guys uh, like this code uh, i have already uh, created now what we're going to do we are going to save this code into our um, synotech git repo and if anyone requires the code and the reference please feel free to send the reply the mail into that mail id whatever mail id you receive the invitation please reply the mail and we are going to send you the link there okay and uh, that's all we're going to do for the like this code we're going to add into our git if you want to do that let me do here no need to send the mail it will be open for everyone what i'll do now guys let me open the git Under the git. Okay. Let me get a workshop. Angular fifteenth October. Okay. Let me make it public that anyone able to access. Let me create a repo. What I'm going to do now? Let me commit this code. okay now guys we have committed the code uh, this is our uh, url i'm going to paste this url into our chat box and uh, you guys can simply click and clone the project okay and you have any issues anything just raise the issue here you have issue button here you can go and raise the issue anything anything you have any requirement anything will be there you can go and attach here okay it's up to you we have i have make it open and you can go and make it you can add your own you can clone the project you can see what is happening here okay okay guys next go for the next one now we are going to plan for the angular 18 workshop free workshop for all of you like um, maybe upcoming week or somewhere we are going to send with invitation to everyone that what are the new new features is introduced in angular uh, 14 and all these things but one thing you have to understand guys whatever we have discussed today this is 10 percent of angular or you can say five percent of angular same way we have 20 plus different 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 security like tools are available into our project if anyone interested to join our angular classes all these things if your experience also if your professor also doesn't matter because we are real-time expert and um, we are giving only the real-time project only and if anyone interested to join the class you can feel free to contact us you can go and uh, the same link you can contact our batch is just started out with our angular real-time project you can go and join you can see a lot of tools because log logging will be there 
and uh, we'll go to learn about the library also there caching is just is this is the one of the caching part we have lots of application caching different different technology also there means 120 plus tools we are going to integrate our application light cell integration into chd pipeline how we are going to manage the git git branching pull request uh, approval chd build automatic deployment automatic um, build all these things going to do Dockerization of the application, social media authentication like Facebook, Google, or Twitter authentication, GitHub authentication. You can add your company own authentication. How you can do that? Apart from that, we will learn about NGRX concept. What are different different NGRX? All these things we are going to learn and going to implement in a project one by one. Thank you all. Thank you for joining today's session, and we are looking forward to join our next class, our next session. Have a nice day.